We've been interested in clinical pathways, and there's been very, very little written or researched around kind of the breadth of them. Who's developing? How are they being developed? What are the topics? What are the challenges? Are they working? So we set about to try to bring some data to uh, the table, and we worked with the analysis group and the folks there to help do a landscape assessment. And we did that by doing internet surveys and telephone surveys with around 25 different folks representing 25 different groups. And these represented payers and providers and, and uh, patient groups and vendors and the like. And we observed really seven themes that are worth considering. The first is there are many players that are involved in pathways. Typically, payers are the ones that initiate it, but providers are critical to the development of those pathways. And sometimes there are outside vendors that are developing the pathways because that gives some independence from the payer. The second observation we made was that the topics that the pathways are focused on are really no surprise. It's areas that are expensive, where there's multiple ways to handle the patient, and when there's variability. So that's the second. The third is there really are very few best practices. The Institute of Medicine came out with guidelines for developing guidelines, but there's no corresponding one for pathways. Most groups are using literature reviews and focusing on randomized trials, but there's really no consensus or best practice about, well, how do I bring that evidence together? What do I do if there's a lack of evidence? So that's the third. The fourth is uh, there's many measures of success. Some people it's, well, how many uh, patients were ending up using the, the pathway and how often did the doctor comply? But there's very little evidence around, well, how did the patients do? What were their clinical outcomes? What was the impact on cost of care? So these are the kinds of things that we found. The fifth area is really about disclosure. By and large, the patient comes to see their doctor, they have no idea that the physician might be incented to comply with guidelines that will impact the type of care they either do or don't receive, and, and that's an area of, that we believe more transparency is needed. Uh, uh, the sixth issue is we're likely to see more of these. In more areas than just oncology, we're likely to see them in rheumatoid arthritis and uh, multiple sclerosis and even hypertension. That's what our survey uh, indicated. And then the last, the seventh sort of observation is that there's a bunch of barriers for this moving forward. For for pathways to be more ubiquitous. Everything from, you know, physicians don't necessarily want to buy into this. There's IT issues about how do you do this in the in the day-to-day -day moments of care. Uh, and, you know, is it cost effective? Is it actually improving care and doing it in a way that is um, reasonable for the investments to make them happen? So these are the types of things we observe as we've spoken to 25 different groups around the country and how they're doing it and what they're doing and where the problems are.